Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for our next interview of the Clean Living in Seven interview series. I am so thrilled to uh, invite Beth Riccanati, uh, who is an MD, onto our, our interview series. Thanks so much for joining us, Beth. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So Beth is um, a internal medicine physician and she spent two years at Columbia Presbyterian Women's Health Clinic. Uh, she also spent eight years in practice at the Cleveland Clinic for Women's Health, as well as the Cleveland Clinic's uh, Wellness Institute. And uh, now she is a mover and a shaker in the wellness world and, and really doing a lot in the mass media, correct? Uh, on bringing health practices um, and making them attainable for and um, doable, right? <laughs> yes. Awesome. Okay, so uh, each one of our uh, interviewees is taking on one of the three pillars. We have clean eating, movement, and mindfulness. And Beth, I believe you are going to be taking on clean eating or nutrition, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. So I've got my timer here, and we've got uh, five minutes. Will you share with us your top tips uh, around nutrition and clean eating? I absolutely will. Thank you so much, Sarah. I want to focus on three tips, okay? I want to talk about um, eating lots of fruits and vegetables, fresh food. I want to talk about uh, making sure you know the ingredients and in what you're eating. And I want to talk about hydration. Okay, so let me go back. You got to eat real food. It's really important. Actually, most of us don't eat real food. What that means. One, you need lots of fruits and vegetables. In fact, we're supposed to get five servings a day of fruits and vegetables, and it's actually hard to do. Start keeping track, you'll be amazed. We're not all doing it. Um, in addition, it's important to eat uh, really good sources of protein. Um, if you're eating meat, trying for organic meat, even better grass-fed meat as well. Um, good fish, sustainable, sustainably caught. Um, lots of legumes, whole beans, things like that. This all comes under the rubric of something called the Mediterranean diet, which you may be familiar with. This has been shown again and again and again to help prevent disease and actually to treat disease. I'm a really big fan of eating this type of food. In addition, um, you've, so actually, let me take a step back. How to, sometimes we, it's very easy to say that you got to eat the Mediterranean diet and you don't necessarily know what that means. An easy way to do that, for example, if you're on social media, is you can get great ideas going through Instagram or Facebook, et cetera. People post these wonderful, very quick, easy recipes, pictures, thoughts, et cetera, around this topic. So um, I have found that it's really helpful for me and for the people that I speak with and counsel to actually peek on social media if you need ideas for how to, how to meet that goal. Love it. Okay, two, know your ingredients. You gotta turn the package over. If you're buying a box or a bag that has a label, make sure you turn it over and read what's actually in it. The first five ingredients are the ones that matter the most. That's the bulk of whatever is in that package is in those first five ingredients. And what I really care about is sugar. Sugar is a known anti-inflammatory and it's it's hidden. It's amazing how many ways the manufacturers have found to reword the word sugar. So please make sure you turn the package over and read those five ingredients and look for sugar. And then you want to look for all the various chemicals that are in there um, because they're usually a lot if you're buying packaged and processed food. So two tips for what you can do to minimize there. One, when you go to the grocery store, walk the perimeter more than walking in the center. In the center are all the packaged goods and canned goods and processed this and that, not so good for you. The perimeter has more of the fresh food. So that's an easy way without doing anything to, to keep it healthy. Another idea is to look on the Environmental Working Group's website. They are constantly updating uh, foods that, that are good, clean, foods that are quote dirty, and those are high in pesticides and it's just a good way to, to get an idea of, of um, where you can put, put your dollars, et cetera. The third tip that I really want to focus on, because most of us don't do this either, is hydrate. Drink. Drink, drink, drink. I'm a big fan of water. It's easy. Um, 
tap water if it's if you like it, bottled water, if, whatever. But you need eight glasses a day, approximately, of water. And yes, you can drink other beverages. And yes, that helps and counts. But really, besides water, maybe some coffee. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to be drinking a lot of juice, particularly juice from the store. Um, it's loaded with sugar and it's been stripped of all of its nutrients. Ideally, um, lots and lots of water. Um, a lot of people now I know like to, when they get up in the morning, um, have a glass of warm water with a lemon. It's an easy way to start the day. It tastes really good. And uh, it just kind of get, gets everything going. So I definitely recommend that as well. I think, Sarah, those are probably my three biggest. I love them. I love them. They're right along with the clean living philosophy, spot on. And I love that you brought uh, the EWG up. And because I have my phone right here with its timer, <laughs> I wanted to quickly show everyone. You can, I don't know if you can see this with the screen, but you can download their app. And then when you're at the grocery store, you can just scan the products and they have, um, a rating for toxicity. I didn't know that. It's amazing. Yeah. That's and you can scan not just your food products, but you can also scan your household products. So your cleaning products and um, awesome, awesome app. So thanks for bringing that up. That's, that's great. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So our next question is, uh, in this interview series, we're trying to take on the mystery of why do we do what we do when we know what we know? So through your experience, uh, both personally and professionally, uh, what do you got to say on this? <laughs> so many things. Um, okay. It's, it's sometimes hard to, to, in, in this case, talking about food, it's sometimes hard to make the right choices. And, um, I have found, that if I can follow a couple of very simple, uh, I don't want to call them rules because that's so constraining, but it was a couple of, of, of simple ideas, it, it can keep me in track. First of all, I'll keep it really, really simple. So for example, exhibit A, I keep out a bowl of fresh fruit. It's out all the time and it's simple and it's easy and kids walk by and I walk by and whoever walks by and you can grab a piece of fruit. It's not complicated. So one, keep it simple. Two, keep it consistent. It's much easier to follow something when it's always the same. So I, I tell my kids to go to bed at the same time. It's the same idea in terms of food, like eat breakfast, pack a snack, I and mean, keep it very, very consistent in terms of what you're trying to do, and you're more likely to keep doing it. In fact, it's been said that if you do something for 28 days in a row, most likely you'll do it on the 29th. So for example, in this case, if you eat a nice healthy breakfast, 28 days in a row, you're probably going to do it on the 29th. And if not, you're going to miss it and you'll probably go back to it on the 30th. If you only do it for a week, you may do it the next day, but you may not. So if you can, you want to keep it simple and you want to keep it consistent and at least hit that one month mark because that will ensure hopefully that you can keep maintaining what it is you're trying to actually maintain. And then one of my favorite sayings that I like to tell people is the perfect is the enemy of the good. I love it. <laughs> never is that more important than in terms of what we eat. And I think trying to obtain the most ideal menu plan, morning, noon, and night is, is really hard. And we just, good enough is good enough. And I think if you can remember that, you're well on your way to, to making a lot of healthy choices. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you for sharing those awesome tips. They were spot on with the clean living philosophy and we really appreciate them. And we really appreciate you taking time to this interview. So tell us where can our community or the viewers find you? Absolutely. Uh, I have an Instagram account. I post a healthy tip every morning and my handle is at house calls for wellness. And I also have a website, www.housecallsforwellness.com. Perfect. Great. And I will give her a plug on the Instagram account. And I love how you brought that up because it's it, Instagram really is something that helps to keep me creative in the kitchen and inspired around my health habits as well. And your account, I always love when I, um, every morning seeing, seeing your health tip and then thinking, pondering it and seeing if I can integrate it for the day. So I appreciate that. So check her out on Instagram. She's really, it's really a great and beautiful account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We really, really appreciate all of your wisdom that you have shared with us. And um, yeah, 